So, I want to use this object as our case study for the next thing, right? I've actually said this a couple of times, it slipped out of my tongue um, because I've forgotten that we haven't covered it in this class yet. But I've said when referring to something like this, I've actually just said more than just it's the derivative. I've actually said the phrase, I don't know how many of you caught it, I've said first derivative, which kind of implies, well, how many other derivatives are there? Now, once you differentiate once, you get a function. Differentiating is just a process, like it's a rule. You can apply it as many times as you like. Okay? So if I were to differentiate again, what useful information would it give me? Well, let's have a go at this. I'm going to start from here. 3x squared minus 3. I'm not going to use this line because well, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to differentiate the derivative. Okay? Now I need to introduce some notation for you. So just make a little subheading. Notation. Okay. We talk about three different objects that are the most important when you're trying to understand a function. Right? You talk about the original function. You talk about the first derivative. And then, because you're differentiating again, we call this next thing, no prizes for guessing, the second derivative. You can go ahead, you can find a third, or a fourth, or the fifth. It just turns out that those are not that useful or interesting. I mean, you can use them for things, but we don't need them really. So these are the three objects I'm interested in. Now, based on how you start off your notation, you use slightly different notation to move forward. So for instance, if you think way back to when we did first principles, we talked about function notation. Remember that? f of x. Okay. What do we apply, what symbol do we apply to get your first derivative? A dash. So we call this f dash. So if you were to differentiate again, will you just put another dash? So you can have f double dash. All right. That's another way of writing the second derivative. Uh, likewise, using the same notation, if I called it y instead of f of x, we've seen y dash before. We've also seen y double dash, like that. Okay. Now, um, f of x, y, they're just labels. I can call functions whatever I like. Later on, you're going to encounter, actually, the function you're differentiating is called x. I know that's a bit weird, but you'll usually differentiate that with respect to time. It's something we'll get to in motion. It's related to physics. Okay. In that context, rather than using dashes, I don't know, physicists, they actually use a dot right over the top. So this is their symbol for saying differentiate with respect to time. Differentiate once, it's called x dot. No prizes for guessing, if you differentiate again, you'd call it x double dot. And there's two dots, it looks like a weird, awkward emoji. Okay, there you go. So these are all ways of saying differentiate once, differentiate again. Okay? Now, none of these is my favorite. The favorite one that I have, the last one, it looks the most awkward, but the reason I like it is because it's the most informative. It tells you the most about what's going on. Okay? So I'm going to come back to using y. Right? The first derivative, we call it the gradient function, right? Because it tells you the gradient at any point on the curve. And so that's why I think the most helpful descriptive definition or notation is dy on dx. Because it literally tells you it's rise over run. Yeah? Rise over run. Now think about this for a second. Just put your pens down. What this means is, you know how like, oh, dash. Dash is a, a little piece of notation you add onto the y. You can do it as many times as you like. Dot is a little bit of notation. You just add it on to whatever your function is called. What is the piece of notation that's been added on to y to turn it into this? And the answer is, remember, it's this guy. It's d on dx, right? You see, you literally apply that to y. And look, the y appears here. It's dy on dx. Does that make sense? So this is, and I did say this phrase earlier, we call this the differential operator. Now if I do this again, if I do this a second time to this, this is what happens. You do this about this. Does that make sense? I'm taking that thing, that's the first derivative, bless you, and I'm differentiating it again. Okay, we'll have a look at this, right? On the numerator, because these are fractions, right? On the numerator, you see I have the letter D twice, right? It's D and then the difference and then the difference again, okay? So what I write at the top is D squared Y. Okay, you see there's the D and then the D again. On the bottom, you see how there's two DX's, right? So it's actually DX and then DX again. So it really should be written, don't write this, just watch. 
It should be written as that, because you see there's two dx's, the whole thing gets repeated. But mathematicians, lazy, <coughs> they write that. Okay. So a lot of people don't like this because it's, well, look, you look at the whole set of things there. It's, um, it's the longest and hardest and most awkward to write of this entire scheme, like so. But I stand by what I said before. I think it's the most descriptive. When I talk about it, that's the one that I will always go to. Um, it also is a nice thing. It tells you what the um, variables are. For example, I said to you, hey, uh, this function here is y. But you don't know if it's in terms of x or r or t or s or who knows? Whereas this one tells you exactly what you're dealing with. Okay? So this is my favorite. But you need to be able to recognize all of them. Okay? So now you know what these things, now you know how to talk about these things. Now the question is, well, what are the first and second variables? You got the first one here. I need some space. What is the second derivative of this function? Have a look. What do you get? It's a very simple function. Have a look. It's just 6x, that's it. Okay, 6x. 